Welcome to our moon week. In light of the lunar eclipse that just passed, we will be decoding all six episodes of Moon Knight. So stay tuned. Layla, Layla, Layla. It's time to have a sit down. In typical girlfriend, long lost wife fashion, she does what any self-respecting curved woman in love would do. She gets a fake passport and hunts her man down. Or is it her men's down? Maybe a thruple. Bruh. But on a serious note, to see everything Mark is facing, Layla, she a real one. She really got his back at the end of the day. Or maybe she just knows he's just trying to get down to the bottom of it, see what's going on. Or maybe she's just a thrill hog. As Layla follows Mark to Egypt, Mark is in a fight with himself and Steven. Steven is throwing Mark all off his game. As you notice so far, everywhere throughout this series, there is some type of reflection that Steven is able to enter Mark's thoughts through. It seems like Marvel is using reflections as the way to trigger the connection between Mark and Steven. You call it a reflection. I call it more of a deep face-to-face -face massage of their feelings. And I really need Steven to be a little bit more patient. I know he all locked away like a genie in a bottle. But Mark really out here hunting down bad guys. And in the middle of the fight scene, Steven trying to reason. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that probably ain't the time or place for that. So when Khonshu appear, Mark like, look, I'm dealing with kind-hearted Steven over here. You only come around after everything that popped off. We need backup. Godly backup. Khonshu like, look, calling the big dogs in ain't the best option. They ain't exactly cool with me at the moment. So Khonshu decides, I ain't gonna listen to my first mind. Let's hold court. What better way to get the God's attention than to block the sun with the moon? I mean, it's what I do. But more importantly, it's symbolic of who really controlling these so say lunar eclipses. That's why I rock with Kanju. He know how to shake the room and on command the gods respond in appropriate fashion. Knock and we shall let you in as they open the portal up and of course it's located inside the pyramids of Giza where else would it be the scene of the meeting of the gods was cool we had Hathor Horus Isis Osiris Tefnut and Khonsu of course I would suggest maybe looking up all these gods as it will make this video super long for me to have to go through each of them but i will touch on osiris as he had a prominent role in this meeting osiris is one of the most important gods of egypt he is the god of the underworld and the true judger of souls after hero convinces the gods that kanju mark stephen and whoever else they can't be trusted now i have a real quarrel with that whole scene Marvel, your portrayal of the beloved gods seem a little, shall I say, PG? So while all this ruckus going on in the simulated world, the gods don't have no knowledge and they gonna believe all that other stuff that Harold's spitting? Just don't seem right. I mean, what's so important in the little tomb that, what, they got a good movie going on that we all know about? I mean, let me know. Yeah, I'm for real. I'm like... Give me the adult version, cause this ain't it. So Mark now realizes he's truly on his own. Gotta stop Harold himself. He learns he can track down Ahmed's tomb by using coded direction inside, where would it be? Of course, Sinfu's sarcophagus. And right on schedule, Layla, hi Layla, appears and of course she moonlights as an antique dealer. See what I did there? whom of course knows where this sarcophagus is at. 
we then see Layla and Mark on the hunt to get this sarcophagus. And I think this is an important aspect because Mark and Steven kind of start to work together. Even though they don't want to. Utilizing each other's strengths. Because Mark seems like the strong one, but Steven seems like the smart one. And he knew all about the sarcophagus. I mean, throughout this scene, Steven does tend to get in the way but they are learning to tolerate each other right tolerate or is mark using steven hmm. you be the judge vibers i mean i mean in mark's eyes he would love to just be able to use steven's intellect while he does the enforcing because when steven turns into mr knight now Mark and Moon Knight gotta keep looking over their shoulders making sure Steven ain't lying on a dagger somewhere. But what we is starting to see is that Layla, she could have been a ninja warrior, princess in the past life. She with all the shits. So after Layla show out, she got a bone to pick with Mark. She wanna know what Harold was talking about earlier. So Mr. Deflection Mark, you know him. He started an argument. And of course, this couldn't be done at just the right time. They're trying to piece together the map. I think Steven's intellect is called up now. Yep, there he is. He quickly pieces the map together and they realize they need to be able to go back in time to know where the constellations were when the map was first made. What's that? Did someone call Kanshu? Mr. Knight finally comes through as he helps Kanju sky shift, which of course gets Kanju in prison, turned into a stone, all that good stuff that he warned about. Thanks, Marvel. Let's make the gods only good to further complicate the issue. Meanwhile, Harold, he finds a way back to Kanju. I mean, of course he would. So he's looking at the stone and giving him his undying devotion and all his problems and how he's going to take over the world and find Ahmed's tomb. How convenient is that? Hope you enjoyed. Comment below on your thoughts of this edition of Decoded. Let us know what we missed. What did you get from it? Did y'all do some decoding? As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when we upload. Follow us in the community too, because we will be offering updates, more exclusive interactions, polls, things of that nature. Stay tuned for the next episode and come back so we can vibe on it.